it step by step how I made this, stick with me. I guess I don't have to explain my motivation for this project. I was just sick of babysitting my machine or being left with a gigantic mess on the table. One day I saw a post on the Inventables forum about a dust design by somebody that I really liked. He knew that it had potential and even started a Kickstarter campaign. Right now I think you can already order it as a product. But buying this wasn't really an option for me. Instead I watched his presenting video a few times and spent an evening with SketchUp to recreate the design. Here I noticed that my motor mount was too bulky to work with this design, so I drew a slimmer one. The other thing I didn't like about this were the short bristles. When they are short they are quite stiff and can't be dragged over clamps and such very easily and put more stress on the gantry, maybe also affecting the cut. So then I changed and improved the design until it would fit my needs. And this is what it ended up looking like. After all that preparation was done, I started with making the new motor mount. The process is really similar to the old one I made in another video. I let the CNC mill a piece of polyethylene thickness and shape only a third of the way through to save time. Here cutting threads into it, which actually hold up really well. For mounting the clamp I used the wood screws this time. They hold even better than metric screws and of course with pre-drilling the holes. Then making some additional side supports out of plexiglass. Turn out that they really stiffen up the whole motor assembly. Though plexiglass isn't really the best material for this as it breaks really easily. I may replace it with aluminum or even steel. And here it's done and looking good. Alright, now that this is done, I can start working on the actual dust shoe. I'm gonna start with making the sliding dovetail track in which the whole dust shoe can slide up and down. But the way I made this track wasn't really good, because this shape was cut from a solid block of plywood and then I glued another strip next to it to complete the dovetail. But making this piece was really difficult, so now I try to make it simpler. The key for this is a dovetail router bit. I cut the profile to a straight edge of birch plywood and cut it into a thin strip and then to thickness. Safety people, please close your eyes for a second. These pieces can then be glued to a strip of 3mm MDF. While the glue is drying, the CNC cut out more pieces. Now that the glue on these is dry enough, I can glue on the other part. And I want the gap to be 6mm, so I'm using two pieces of 3mm MDF as spacers. And that should make the slot evenly spaced and parallel. It's critical for these pieces to not slide around. Once the glue was dry, I trimmed off the excess wood. Next I need to make the matching part of the sliding dovetail into these pieces and I again do this with a dovetail bit and a router table. Here the key is to keep it slow and only make small adjustments. If you cut away too much you end up with a loose fit and have to start over with a new piece. I think I screwed up 3 times or so. <laughs> Once the pieces fit and slide easily I cut the tracks to final size. Then the CNC cut out the pieces with which the tracks get mounted to the gantry. Quite complex shape, but that's what the CNC is good at. And now with these pieces I can attach the sliders to the gantry. Simply by sliding one of these on the bottom, then inserting the rails. Then I can slide on the other piece on the top. To secure the rails I put in one screw on the top and on the bottom. Later I also added a washer to prevent the wood from splitting. 
The hole on the top I actually threaded out with a M3 tab, just to see if it would work and hold in wood. It does. Now that I'm tightening these screws here, that also clamps the whole assembly to the gantry here. As you can see tolerances are not big here, but everything fits and clears. I also put a threaded hole for a locking knob into it, so I can lock this at any position. So this is my prototype of the actual dust shoe shape. And the big question was how to attach it to the holder. The most obvious idea was to use small magnets like these. But my gut instinct just said... They probably won't hold. You don't want the dust shoe coming loose and causing damage to itself or the CNC. Come up with a better idea. So what I came up with next is this shape. The dust shoe has these two pins that stick out and you can just slide it up and then in. The other side is the same but it also has a clip. With this arrangement the dust shoe has no chance to get out of the holder. But you also can see a small problem. There's just too much play and wiggle room and these holders are actually rigid and the ones on the machine are not. So the way I wanted to solve this problem was to use magnets. But I wanted to attach them to the sides like this so that they don't have to hold anything but just keep the dust shoe from wiggling and rocking back and forth. And I guess that should work. Or I hope. These pieces are supposed to fit together with dowels. They fit together absolutely perfectly. The seam here is, there basically is no seam, it's like in the 3D model. Well, that seems to work. Now the actual dust shoe I want to cut from this piece of 10mm acrylic, but I only have this single scrap piece and as you can see, it just fits. So I really only have one try to get it right. Fortunately, everything went smoothly without problems. And now the best part of the whole project. Now I need to make the clip mechanism. So I let the CNC cut out this lever here and it will fit into a little recess here like in my prototype and I just have to make the same hole on the actual piece. Next I drilled a hole for the spring and as a spring I'm just using one from a pen and this seems to work as well. And now I need to make this pin of the lever. To locate the right position I'm using the point of a bright point drill bit. I then prepared a dowel by sanding it to 45 degrees. I stuck it in about this far so when I push here the pin fully retracts from the hole. And now here's a better look at how this works. Now trying it on the machine and it works as well. But there is a lot of wobble as you can see and that's what I want to take care of with the magnets here. These ones are already in place because I wanted to test their fit and they actually fit so tightly that I can't get them out again even without glue. And of course making sure the polarity is right. Now with the magnets in place, it really snaps into position. Though the side to side wobble isn't fully gone, but I would say that's acceptable. Then I glued the holding arms together. Now while the glue is drying, I can start tackling the biggest challenge of this project, which is making the brush. Therefore I let the CNC cut a channel around here, on the prototype you can see it better, and in it I want to glue in some bristles. 
The best way to get bristles are from little brooms like these ones. They're really cheap and have fairly soft bristles. In fact, they are 0.2 millimeters thick. And as you can see, I already made a test brush. I was quite successful with my first test brush. Doesn't lose any of the bristles unless you pull on them, which a CNC won't do. The big challenge there was to find the right kind of glue, and I settled with silicone. I also made a few more helpers, like a little stick for aligning the first bristles, and a metal tube that I bent to shape, which would also help aligning the bristles to make it easy to insert them into the slot. It is quite a tedious process, but after a while you get the hang of it and start to set up kind of a assembly line. I never thought that this would use so many bristles. At the end where the slot is, I glued the bristles in a little angled so that they would kind of close the slot again. Hmm. I think I need another broom to clean up this broom I just destroyed. While the silicone was drying, I shaped the spot arms a little bit. I gave the silicone about 24 hours to dry. The leftover stuff is completely dry at least. And this came out really nice in my opinion. As you can see, not all the bristles are glued in because they were either too short to begin with or just didn't make it all the way down to the glue, so I'm just gonna remove all of these and then cut them to length. Therefore, I used a piece of paper and used its edge as a guide. These bristles are also quite difficult to cut. A pair of pocket knife scissors work best in the end. And while I was at it, I took the time and, well, you know. As you can see with this method, I get them to roughly the same length. But on the test piece, I get them to the exact same length. So to do that, I make these pieces which fit in and outside of the brushes. And they now kind of clamp onto the brushes and hold them in place. And with these spacer pieces, I can bring them to the exact height. Now I can take this package and sand the bristles flush at the disc sander. Here you have to make sure not to sand too long at one spot or the bristles may get hot and melt together. You can also feel if you are sanding bristles or wood. Once the entire wood surface touches the sandpaper, you're finished. Once done, some of the bristles may look that they got molten together, but once you remove these things, you can separate all of them again. And now all the bristles are at the exact same length. The last thing missing is the hose, and therefore I bought this 80mm super flexible hose. And as an adapter I'm using this piece of HT pipe, the same stuff that my ductwork is made out of. One end fits really snugly into the dust shoe. And the upper part tapers a little bit out, and the hose fits perfectly over this bigger diameter. Just need to get rid of this portion and make it a little bit shorter, so... Now back to the question why this has a slot in the back. Some of the CNC software like Easel or Universal G-Code Center want to start at the bottom left corner with the bit touching the surface. And the easiest way to set this up is without any obstructions like a dust shoe. The problem with a closed dust shoe now would be how to get it on. But with a slot, it's no problem. And the mounting arms of course also work with this. So you just slide in the dust shoe, lower the arms and snap it in place. And when the bristles are just touching the surface, you can tighten the knobs. And then it's ready to cut. And when you're finished, you just slide out the dust shoe, pull out the arms, and then you can slide the dust shoe out. I also drew a little scale on the side here, which makes it easy to bring the support arms to the same height. Now it's time for a test run. I'm using an 8mm bit with relatively aggressive cut settings, so making a lot of dust. Well, this first test run went really good. I can't see any dust, except for a few bristles that it keeps losing, but at some point all the loose bristles are gone and then this will stop. This test cut, of course, also has a purpose.
The final setup now looks like this. I installed a ductwork because I had the pipes left over, so why not? And the dust collector is the small dust collector I built, actually just for this purpose, and it's working great. Well, there isn't much left to say other than it works really well. It literally catches all the dust. Almost nothing stays on the table, and especially the rails stay clean, so dust can't affect the accuracy. I really only can recommend making something like this for any CNC because it really makes it dust free. That's what we all want, at least I think. It certainly makes using the machine a lot more fun because you don't have to deal with the mess after a cutting job was finished. I hope I could give you some inspiration or ideas with this design. And that's all I have to say. Yeah. It literally, literally, literally. In this video, I show you how I make this really effective dust shoe. 